All right, everybody, we want to welcome you. It's great to see you all. This is the Global Watch International Call. It's June 21st, 2023, 3 p.m. Jerusalem time. And this hour, as it is every week, is the Israel Watch with Karen Davis and Susan Hagee leading. And um, I'm just going to pray a blessing over both of you. And um, it is my joy and my pleasure to do that. We're just thankful that you are both part of the Global Watch family. And um, it's a family that's growing in number, but more importantly, it's growing deeper in relationship with, with God and with each other. So Father, we just speak your incredible blessings over Susan and over Karen today, two women that we love and admire very much. And we just declare um, your favor surrounds them as with a shield, Psalms 512. We declare great wisdom and uh, uh, and revelation every single day that everything that they do would be would be uh, saturated with with wisdom that comes from above, not God, not earthly wisdom, but godly wisdom. We declare renewed strength every day. Those who wait on you will renew their strength, and we just declare that no weapon formed against you will prosper. That God would hide you in the shelter of His wings. No harm would come to you. No destruction near your tent. And the Lord says, with long life. I will satisfy them. And uh, right out of Psalms 91, and we declare it's going to be long, uh, healthy life, uh, both mentally and physically. We just declare that until the day that Yeshua takes you home, you're going to be active in, uh, in ministry and, uh, and serving him uh, in full capacity. We just declare those things in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Fred. Hallelujah. Hi, everybody. Um, it's been uh, quite a week in Israel, um, a very painful, difficult, terrible week, actually. Um, as if you, I know most of you are following the news, and uh, there was just uh, some awful terror activity and uh, soldiers killed in Janine, um, which is a real, uh, on Monday, I think that was Monday, and then yesterday, um, even as we were getting ready to launch into our Rosh Chodesh uh, worship celebration, um, there was another terror attack uh, in um, in Samaria, and uh, people were killed. Um, and uh, this is the this is the context for which we entered in to the new month of Tammuz. And uh, I know we're going to be speaking more about, uh, you know, the, the dire straits and the, the, you know, traditionally this is a period that leads into Tisha B'Av and, and a lot of very painful things have happened uh, to, to the Jewish people during this time. And we really understand mm -hmm. that we need to use worship as our primary uh, weapon in this hour. And um, a very interesting thing happened last night uh, in the midst of, of this gathering. We had a, um, I, I know this, that many of you, I think, actually tuned in and, and joined the, the live stream. Um, but we, um, that we had a comp we had a blended team of uh, half the team was from our congregation uh, on Mount Carmel led by Yuri Mulchen, and the other half uh, uh, with Andre Levine came from Tiberias from the Sea of Galilee um, with three of their they had three musicians. And so we were a blended team, intercon really representing the whole, <laughs> uh, you know, from the Mediterranean to the Sea of Galilee. Um, and there was such a unity of, of uh, sound and heart and spirit as they, as they began to worship. I mean, immediately the presence of the Lord uh, was, was with us. Um, and I, I noticed that it, with the exception of uh, just a couple of people, everyone on that platform were immigrants from Ukraine uh, or, or other, another Russian-speaking countries. And they, they have come and they're enriching the body. So along with uh, this team that came from Tiberias, they brought a couple um, that live in the Odessa area in Ukraine. They're pastors. They're pastoring a congregation from an area that is being bombed every single day. And, um, and most of the pastors in that area have left, and they felt the Lord told them not to leave, that they needed to stay there for their people. And they're only here right now um, 
uh, just to be be renewed and be refreshed. And they were brought into this worship night last night, and um, it was to see to see them raising their hands and worshiping the Lord uh, in the midst of having lost everything. I mean, they're, they're, there's no water, there's no electricity, they're, um, and they actually are Jewish and actually could flee and find refuge in Israel, but God has told them they needed to stay there now for their people. And, I, and uh, it just was very significant because I, I, Susan, and, Susan Hagee and I were really uh, praying together and discussing this session and very much of what she's going to share with us is related to, to that. And um, and I know she's going to bring us into um, Habakkuk today. <laughs> and uh, in that, the Lord reminded me of a song that that um, that we've been doing over the years. And uh, you may have, you may know the song in English. We actually translated it into Hebrew some some years ago. And so I just felt to open with that today.
everlasting. You are God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, and we will sing praise at all times. Hallelujah. Your praise shall be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Just the fact that you found that song, it means so much to me. Thank you. I just, God brought me into uh, Habakkuk. Um, can, yeah, there you go. God brought me into Habakkuk a few months ago. And I didn't really know why, but boy, I've been learning a lot. And so I, I want to be able to share it with you today. Uh, what he's given me. Um, never again is what we have said and what we've heard since World War II and the Holocaust ended. I, I heard it more here than I ever did in my whole life. And when I first began visiting the Holocaust survivors in 2004, they would share their experiences, uh, which were often horrific. It was, it was a learning time for me. But I have wondered many times how they even survived their, with their mental and emotional faculties intact. For years afterward, I would hear them always say, never again. They would end every visit with never again. The Holocaust survivors are very sensitive to terrorism and violence, no matter where it is in the world. They, they will talk to us about it wherever they've heard about it. They moved to Israel to be safe. They wanted to be among their own Jewish people. And they felt this was home. Now they're safe. Their past has been filled anywhere, listening to their parents, grandparents, great grandparents saying, next year in Jerusalem. So they knew this was a fulfillment of the people in their past. So now they're here and they're afraid again. They're subject to scams and targeting of the elderly, which is in every country. We understand that. But it's especially difficult for survivors. Um, there was even a time where they were being knocked to the ground um, and robbed. And we had one survivor here, Paulina, it broke her knee. Uh, she lost her purse. She lost everything. Um, she was injured badly. She had to go through all the rehabilitation. Her back was injured. She could never walk the same again. And so she's afraid. She's afraid to go out. And I understand that. Most of the survivors today live with Ukraine-Russia war, just as, as Karen was talking about that. They are uh, subject to having that right in their living room. It's on all the time. They have family, they have friends there in both Ukraine and Russia and the surrounding countries. And they know the towns and places that are being destroyed. Some of them are fearful for the lives of their grandchildren. They're talking on the phone to people in the midst of the war. And so it brings right into their home and it brings it all right back to them. It all reminds them of the times leading up to the Holocaust. But today, I don't hear never again. I don't hear any of them say it. Today I hear silence. I see worried faces and they no longer use that slogan. Instead, now some of them are saying quietly, another Holocaust is coming. That's frightening to hear them say that. With them being so sensitive to everything, I, I want to know more. So in Habakkuk, in the time of Habakkuk, the people had turned to idolatry and morality. The king reduced the welfare services for people so as to accumulate more money to build his, his palace. Apathy was rampant. Torah was not followed. Justice was perverted. 
The gap between the rich and the poor grew and the violence filled the streets of Jerusalem. People could no longer walk the streets in safety. I want to read that to you. Habakkuk 1, 2 to 4. Adonai, how long must I cry violence? I cry to you, but you don't save. Why do you make me see wrongdoing? Why do you permit oppression? Pillage and cruelty confront me so that strife and discord prevail. Therefore, Torah is not followed. Justice never gets rendered because the wicked fence in, in the righteous. This is why justice comes out perverted. Does this sound familiar? Anybody's country? Same today? The survivors see it and they lament over history repeating itself. And that's what they talk about. For 20 years, Habakkuk complained to God about his people and prayed. He is asking questions, but he asked why a lot. Finally, God answered him. He tells Habakkuk, he is raising up the Babylonians to punish his people for their wickedness. I, I can't imagine you're praying for your country and God tells you, well, I'm bringing more wicked people in to destroy you. Uh, what kind of an answer is that? You know, and it's a people group. They use scorched earth tactics. Wherever they were going, they not only wiped out the people, men, women, children, they wiped out all the animals, all the agriculture, and they even cut down all the trees. They completely destroyed everything. So Habakkuk's response is to complain, hey, that's too much. He then went to the ramparts to sit on the wall and wait to see if God will do what he said he would do. He's gonna sit there and wait and see if the Babylonians show up. After 20 years of discourse with God, he finally gets an answer. What does he do? He goes to sit and wait. He kept the revelation to himself. Habakkuk 2, 1. I will stand at my watch post. I will station myself on the rampart. I will look to see what God will say through me and what I will answer when I am reproved. Apparently, he was expecting to get reproved. Habakkuk that often asked God why. And I want to say it is okay to ask why. Yeshua did when he was on the cross. We have that right as well. We can ask other questions. God is actually looking for a discourse with us and the opportunity to clarify and tell us what we need to know. If our children do something wrong, don't we ask them why? Why did you do that? Well, we have the right to ask why. It's called interrogatory prayer. Ask God questions. He wants honesty. And if we have a question, ask him. We can also ask him how he feels about a situation or a person. When we had different houses here, when Abundant Hope had a different houses here in Israel, we had volunteers coming from all over the, the world, all different countries would come. I had seven different countries at a time in, in, the, in the, there and we would work together. But every morning we had corporate prayer. I had two rules. One, no theology discussion. When all different cultures, that is just going to explode. I told him to take it to the beach if you want to talk. But the other one was, our prayer was based on one question. Lord, what can we do for you today and how can we serve you? We expected answers and we got them sometimes before we even said amen. A knock would come at the door and there was the answer. If you ask God, he will answer you. There was violence in Noah's day. Noah warned them while he was building the ark. God punished the wicked world and saved only the righteous, Noah and his family. Jonah was tasked with warning the city of Nineveh to cease their wickedness or be destroyed. They repented and were saved. God is willing to change his mind, just as he did with Moses' plea to spare the Israelites. Habakkuk was told to warn the people to share the prophecy and give them time to repent. Habakkuk 2, 2-3. to three. Write down the vision clearly on tablets so that even a runner can read it. For the vision is meant for its appointed time. It speaks of the end and it does not lie. It may take a while, but wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. God said, make the vision that God gives plain, big letters, simple language. So either someone hurrying past or a messenger running with it, people could still read it. God said to get the message out to the people. And he told Habakkuk, it is time to share the prophecy with the people. Give them a chance to repent. Some were warned of Hitler's plans to crush the Jewish people, and some of them listened. Some did not. One German couple that I knew down in the city of Arad 
told us of warning, begging their parents to escape to, with them to Israel. This was 1936. The day came to leave and the husband told me, I begged my mother to come with us. She said she was German and she intended to die a German. Well, I can tell you that Hitler fulfilled her wish in Auschwitz. Such a horrible thing to deal with, to know that your parents had an opportunity and they did not come. They did not listen. Others were forced into the Holocaust, but they found a way to survive. And some I know had the strength from their Messiah. Rayla stayed strong after she saw her children murdered. She spent the rest of the war helping others and she survived. Bronislava stayed alive and incredibly strong, rescued with her two sons after calling out to her Messiah for salvation, and she had a miraculous, miraculous rescue. The rest of her family were massacred, but he had plans for her. And Miriam, who stayed alive in Auschwitz and Bergen-Belsen, slave labor, all her family were killed except for her two sisters and herself. Today, she has chosen joy over mourning. However, she still does not have Yeshua. She's 99 years old, and we keep praying. Countless others have survived, endured pain, hunger, trauma. Today, they are actually gentle and forgiving people. They are, still don't have Yeshua. But there is something in their life because we have seen the change in them. We come and we visit, and we see the change over the years. And there is a quiet spirit among them. And the only thing I can think is God's talking to him. Yeshua stays with them when we leave. And I believe he's speaking to them. So many of us on this call, I know, have been given gifts. And among them, the gift of prophecy. This can be words of encouragement, warning, praise, future, a variety of things. So my question is, are we prepared to give words in due season at the proper timing of the Lord? God is looking for those with a prophetic gift so that they will faithfully tell the truth. God gives us our gifts, not for us, but for others. Some of us, like myself, when given a word or dream, sit on it and wait. We want to be sure of it, pray into it, and know when it is proper to release it, if at all. Sometimes it can even take years. I received one right after that came to Israel for the first time. It took seven years before I understood it. Others have words for now, today. God uses us all. He is not looking for just a few prophets, however, though. He, God is looking for a prophetic people. He wants more of us. Those who will discourse with him every day, we must share what we know to give people time to repent. Intercessors are needed now, today, every day, to continue in the midst of pressure, physical, and emotional, and spiritual. Each of you on this call are needed and more intercessors beyond you. We must be among those who begin and end in faith. That's in Hebrews 12.2. Can we, like Habakkuk, maintain our composure and joy in the midst of traumatic events? Corey Ten Boom did in the Ravensbrook concentration camp. She heard God and he delivered her and her sister. For myself, I want to be able to bring to the survivors a calm, confident demeanor in the midst of their trauma and their troubles. They have already been there and are afraid of it again. A few years ago, the Lord disturbed my normal quiet day with a question. Are you willing to go into the concentration camps with the survivors in the, in the next Holocaust? I was shocked at the question, uh, but I responded, Lord, that would be counterproductive. Outside the camp, I can organize food, needed items, advocate for them while they're needed. I would be much more help outside the camp. I had it all figured out. His reply was, that was not what I asked you. Are you willing to go into the camps with them? I could not reply for several days. That one, uh, I was disturbed deeply. Um, I prayed. I, I cried. I, I didn't understand it. It scared me. But finally, I knew what the answer was. Yes, Lord, but only if you go in with me. I hope that day does not come. I don't want to see a day with concentration camps again. I don't want to see a day where there is scorched earth again. 
I don't want to see it. I don't want to be in it. None of us do. Habakkuk didn't want to either. But he had a turning point where he actually ceased complaining. He had a new view. What happened? In Habakkuk 2.20, but Adonai is in his holy temple that all the earth be silent before him. He was silent. He stopped speaking and listened. Following that silence, Habakkuk was able to pen a prayer, a song, which Karen just sang for us, of God's power and his ability. Now he must be patient, have confidence, and take joy in his salvation in the midst of his trauma. Though the fig tree does not bud and there is no, are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields yield no food at all, even if the sheep vanish from the sheep pens and there are no cows in the stalls, still I will rejoice in Adonai. I will take my joy in the God of my salvation. Elohim Adonai is my strength. He makes me swift and sure-footed as a deer and enables me to stride over my high places. We must prepare for times of difficulty because we have to be the strong one for others. We have to be able to help others through. We have to be able to give God's word when he gives it. We have to be able to prophesy as he tells us, not on our own. And if we don't know or we're not sure of a word he's given to us, wait, sit with him and wait and give it when he tells. But if he says to speak it out, do not delay. Speak it out. He has a word for people and you don't know who it is. You don't know who it is, but God does. And he really needs you to be in this, needs you to be strong and go forward. But he's not looking for a few. He's looking for a prophetic people, many of us, that we will stand together. And so what I'm going to do here for two minutes I'm going to ask for complete silence, except for Karen playing quietly in the background. No speaking, no words, nothing. I'm going to ask you to listen in the silence if God should speak to you. Don't be concerned if you don't hear anything. It simply means he did not speak to you now. But if you do hear a word or a prayer or a song, please share it after the end of the silence using your hand to be called upon to share. And I encourage you to give him time at home to have silence before the Lamb of God. I just ask that now you will listen and then share with us what God gives to you.
as the words of Habakkuk settle into you, as you hear how God wants to speak to you, is there anyone who feels that God has given them something to say? Can you please share with us? Best thing to do is just raise your hand electronically. <clears throat> Go ahead, Dahlia. You're, you're, you're muted, Dahlia, you're muted. Sorry about that. Thank you. I, I got the book of Ruth. Um, this is uh, Ruth 2, 13, after Ruth had gotten the, the um, bushel of barley uh, she picked it up and went back to the city her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned and Ruth brought out and gave her what she had left over after eating her fill her mother-in-law asked her where did you glean today where were you working blessed be the one who took such good care of you she told her mother-in-law with whom she'd been working she said the name of the man with whom I was working today is Boaz Naomi said to her daughter-in-law may he be blessed by Adonai who has never stopped showing grace neither to the living nor to the dead. Naomi told, also told her the man is closely related to us. He's one of our redeeming kinsmen. Oh, Yeshua, Yeshua, our kinsman redeemer. We thank you, Lord, that you make our bitter sweet. Oh, Lord, and that you are faithful. Oh, Lord, and we just lift up all these Holocaust survivors, Lord God. Oh, not to fear that you're with them, Lord, that you've always been with them. And may they know, Lord, that they have eternity with their, any lost children, any that know, many that know you that died in the Holocaust, Lord, that you purchased them with a price with your love, even, and Lord, that you make the bittersweet, you give them hope, and that you're always with them, oh Lord. So we just bless them, Lord. We bless them to know you, Lord through that you're their kinsman redeemer, that you purchase them with your life, with your love. Give them dreams and visions. Give them an understanding, Lord, that you're always with them and that you've made them holy unto you and that they're yours. In Yeshua's name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Dahlia. So we'll go on to um, Blair. Let's uh, everybody... Be aware of the time. Let's let's be uh, brief because there's six people that raised their hands, but there's actually probably many more people who have heard something from the Lord. So uh, go ahead, Blair. So I looked at what uh, what Jesus prayed before he uh, uh, before he went on the cross, and he's looking to his Father, and he prayed three times, but he prayed. Father, take this cup from me, but not my will, I will be done. And, and so he was submitting himself to his father and his God, who's loved him with an eternal love and not didn't see how that was going to turn out. He, well, he didn't like how he saw that it was going to turn out. But because of that, he was glorified beyond anything he could ever imagine. And so, and that, that just, that, that speaks to me and that that's, that's what the Lord gave me, Amen. That these people. And so I pray for them too, that, that in the midst of this and, and, and being fearful as, as Susan, you share, but Lord. Yeah, go ahead and pray, and pray, go ahead and pray, Blair. Okay. That's good. Heavenly go Father, we, 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 we lift, lift up your name. And, and praise you for for your loving kindness that has endured forever forever and even sent your only begotten son lord and that you have revealed him to us what a joy untold it, or incomparable and we pray lord for those holocaust survivors that have seen such horrific things but lord that you have done these things for your purpose and it is good and there is blessing there lord that we may help them see your loving kindness that takes what man intended for evil and uses it for good. And that we could share that 
that hope and 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 the and, and the, the faith that goes that walks through the valley of the shadow of death. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Blair. Go ahead, Sharon. You have to unmute yourself. I heard the Lord say, in a dry and weary land where there is no water, I am coming like a storm cloud. I am coming like the sandstorm across the face of the earth. Be still and know that I am God. So I pray from Psalm 63, verses 1 through 3. O oh God, you are my God. I shall seek you earnestly. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns for you in a dry and weary land where there is no water. Thus I have seen you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips will praise you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sharon. Let's go to um, Pam. Go ahead and unmute yourself, Pam. Still you muted. Need you need to unmute, Pam. Um, yes, I got Zechariah 2.13. Be silent, all flesh, before the Lord, for he is aroused from his holy habitation. Lord, we thank you. Another version says you, you are springing into action from your holy habitation. You are springing into action. Your words will be heard. Your works will be done. And the voice of the prophets will speak what, what you say. Nothing more, nothing less, nothing different. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Pam. Go ahead, Hillary. Just you have to unmute yourself. Thank you. I had um, like a, a vision of the, the father carrying them as a tender shepherd carries his sheep close to his heart. And in Isaiah 46, he says in verse 3 and 4, Listen to me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, who have been upheld by me from birth, who have been carried from the womb. Even to your old age, I am he, and even to gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear, and even I will carry and will deliver you. And Heavenly Father, I believe you speak in um, Isaiah 41 about how you're the tender shepherd and you carry them close to your heart. And your passion is to bring healing and is to bring love. And, and you say, fear not, I will help you. I am the Lord and the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. And I just praise and thank you, Lord, for your comfort, the loving, everlasting arms you speak about in, I think it's Jeremiah 31, 3, that you've loved your people with an everlasting love. And for these dear ones who are being beset by all these evils and traumas in the natural world, I pray for the Holy Spirit to come upon them to draw them with your cords of loving kindness into salvation and into true surrender into the kingdom of God, where there is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, no matter what the circumstances. And I pray you bless Susan in this journey, that she can bring this word of comfort, this word of affirmation, this word of truth that can penetrate and bring light as it convicts their hearts. And I want to speak Psalm 119, 130. It says, when the word of God penetrates our heart, it brings light. And we speak the light and the love and the blessing of the Father into each one. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Hillary. Let's go to you, Deborah. You need to unmute yourself. 
Um, I heard uh, out of John 14, 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. And so, Lord, I do, I lift up, I just say thank you for your peace, the peace of Yeshua that passes all understanding, the person who is peace be upon these precious ones, be with these precious ones, and that your perfect love casts out all fear. And I also just want to make the declaration of peace, the shalom of God over Israel. In Yeshua's name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Deborah. Let's go to Elaine. Elaine, you just need to unmute yourself. Okay. Mm, so I... Uh... I heard the Lord say, behold the lamb who takes away the sin of the world. I'm coming soon, very soon. Prepare the way for my return. And so that's, um, that's from John. And so it's in keeping with what Susan was talking about. He also said, I'm your joy and your strength. And so, Father, I thank you that, that uh, you have called us to prepare the way. For your return. I thank you, God, that you have counted us um, worthy to do this, to carry your message and to speak truth and to uh, speak a prophetic word in season. And so, Lord, uh, keep our eyes focused on you, fixed on you, on your beautiful face as we behold you, Lord. Um, you will direct us and uh, we need not fear and your presence in your presence we have joy and strength thank you god that you are our joy you are our strength and we carry your joy and strength wherever we go and so as we carry hope into these dark places lord um, we have the confidence that we can release um, your presence, your joy to those who are, are asking questions. So God, I thank you for Susan. I thank you for her team. Bless them as they go. Continue to, to release your joy in and through them and your strength in and through them. And we thank you, God, in advance for the work that you're doing in, in these dark places. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Elaine. Go ahead, Esther. You just need to unmute yourself. So I just general uh, uh, six, 26, uh, 27 from the middle of 26. Esther, excuse me a second. I, it's very, um, for some reason, you're coming in your, your microphone or some, there's something wrong with it. It's very hard to hear what it is that you're saying. Is it better now? Yeah, much better. Okay. So it's from Daniel 6, from the middle of 26. Um, okay. People must fear and reverence the God of Daniel, for he is a living God, and he is endures forever. His kingdom will, be, uh, will not be uh, destroyed. His uh, dominion will be... Uh, Never, never ends. He rescued and he saved his uh, perfume signs and wonders in the heaven and in earth. He has rescued Daniel from uh, the power of the lion. So, um, you know what uh, Su Susan said about you know, the question that God uh, had for him. So Susan, this the answer. He rescued and saved and he performed signs and wonders in the heaven and the, on the earth. So I just pray for all of you as a Jew that that's what God, uh, you know, that is his answer. If you will go to their camps with us, and I do believe as well that they give me words and what Hitler did. So that is the answer for you, my brother and sister. Abba, Kudaracha. Thank you, Lord, that my brothers and sisters are standing together with us, Abba. And even though the question is hard, but the answer is yours. 
loving kindness in your grace that you are the God that uh, saves and does miracles. So I bless all my brothers and the sisters, um, the Gentiles, the two are together grafted, the one you name. So Daeshua, thank you, Lord, for sharing assurance. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Esther. Let's go to Molly. Molly, go ahead and unmute yourself. <clears throat> you. I um, when uh, praying, I saw water um, gushing as Moses struck the rock, and um, from Exodus seventeen six, um, when the people were asking for water, therefore the people contended with Moses and said, "Give us water so that we may drink," and so. A time was there when Israel asked for water to drink and water gushed out. But now the Lord says from John 7, John 7, 37 and 39, Jesus says, let anyone who is thirsty come to me to drink and whoever believes in me as scriptures have rivers of living water will flow from within them. That Jesus is the living water. So there is a thirst and a, a thirst among the, the, the Holocaust survivors, that there is something that they have yet uh, to be fulfilled with. And so the Lord is, is, the Lord is showing that he is the living water. And so Father, we pray tonight, Lord Jesus, that you are the living water. Come and satisfy your people. Even as the woman at the well asked for what, and Jesus, you showed her and told her that I am the living water and whoever comes and drinks from me will never thirst again. So Lord, pour out this living waters to your survivors there that they will know and they will be satisfied even in their, even in their days and years. Lord Jesus, we pray that this thirst will be satisfied as the living waters, the fountains as they drink from the fountains of living water, we prophesy, we declare, and decree that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Molly. Um, let's go to Toyin. Toyin. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I'm so sorry. Please um, go ahead and unmute yourself. Yeah, that's fine. You hear me? Yes, go ahead. I heard... Um, be still and know that I am God. So I'm just going to pray that from um, Psalm 46, 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted amongst the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. So Abba, we thank you, O God, Almighty Lord, for these words of comfort, words of assurance that we are rooted and grounded in your word, O God that as we center our eyes on you, O oh God, almighty Lord, and as we exalt you, that you would be exalted in whatever situations that we are facing, either in Israel, amongst the Holocaust survivors, or in the nations. So Father, we thank you, O oh God, that your word will not return to you void. Though we may not understand fully what you are doing, Lord, you've called us to be still. So help us to be still, help us to focus in on you, help us to trust your word, Lord, in these days and in these day, the days ahead of us. Lord, we thank you for the power of your word. Also, we've been released, we release that for Israel, oh God Almighty Lord, be still and know that he is God. Father, thank you for the Holocaust survivors. We release this word to them as well, O oh God Almighty Lord, that as we look to you, as we carry them, as Moses carried the children of Israel on his heart, as we carry them before you, O oh God Almighty Lord, that you would impart your peace, O oh God Almighty Lord, to them. As we exalt you, you will be exalted in them and through them. We pray this in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. We're going to go to Shoshana and then and then we're going to end uh, this. We're going to go to Su Susan. Then you, Susan Rao, you have something that you want to share, and then we go back to you, Susan Hagee, to um, to uh, uh, finish things up. 
So go ahead, um, Shoshana. Yeah, thank you all very much. Um, I want to add something also to Monica Eckhart's uh, comment in the chat. Um, I just pray. Um, Lord, I thank you that um, you take all the Holocaust survivors out of the prison in their mindset through this trauma. Where everything is in the unconscious and pictures or feelings or smells or whatever is in their senses. I ask that you deliver them and release them and take them out of those prison and out of those chains. That this is going to fall on their mindset. I ask this now in Jesus' name according to Isaiah 61. And I ask for healing and release and deliverance. And as well for the next generation, the generation, the children of those Holocaust survivors, I ask that you are going to heal them too, that you are going to reveal everything to them, that the same I prayed for the Holocaust survivors is going to happen with them, that you are going to release them from all trauma and strengthen them and get them to know to Yeshua and really protect them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Shoshana. I'll go ahead, Susan Rao, and then we're going to go to uh, Susan Higgy to wrap things up. Yeah, I just uh, wanted to thank Susan Higgy for just being in tune with the Lord on this session because I feel like you've taken us through an Elijah moment where the, the, Lord, the Lord was not in the whirlwind or the fire, but in the still small voice. And uh, I, I just had a very um, powerful vision. It was a pro progressive vision. And what I saw was a pair of hands molding clay. And then when it opened up, what appeared out of the clay was a clock tower, much like Big Ben again and much like the open vision of 9-11. But this time it was came out of clay, and it, but it was a watchtower. But as the vision uh, progressed, what happened was a flock of doves began to fly out of this clock. And as the vision progressed, uh, he, the Lord took me underneath those hands and there was uh, praying hands uh, folded in prayer. And I... Uh, realize I know what that means to me but it may mean something if you pray about it for everyone on this line and the scriptures I got was unless the Lord uh, builds the house they labor in vain who build it and also out of Zechariah 4 6 it's not by might nor by power but by my spirit and also in Habakkuk uh, 2 14 for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. <laughs> but I pray for those of you on the watch. Do you take this to heart? And ask the Lord what your part is. Because it's part of what God wants to do to fill the earth with the knowledge of the Lord. That's all I have to say. Amen. Thank you, Sue. Go ahead, um, Susan Hagee. We're going back to you. Wow. I, there's so much that was said that spoke so much to me, so much to my heart. Um, verses that, that have meant a lot to me. And, and, and Susan, the, uh, the verse that you just quoted about the house being built in vain, Father, um, this, is, this has been something from the very beginning. From the very start of what we've done, I have just asked the Lord that 
each survivor's house, each house, them being the house, that he would build them, that they would not be built in vain. He has created them. I do not want them created in vain. I do not want them to leave this earth without him. And it is the prophecy of people that makes things happen. God uses prophecy to bring things about. And the prophetic words today all have power. They have what God gives. He's the one that creates and he creates through the words. He spoke and it was, it was everything that he speaks is. And so when he speaks to us, it's important that we handle those words of power, those, those words of love, that we handle them as he tells us to. And I am so grateful for everyone participating today. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your word. And I would just ask that you continue to ask the Lord to give you more and more and more, because that's what he wants. He wants a prophetic people, not just a prophet here and there. He wants a people a prophecy. And thank you, Fred and Susan, for making this possible. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Susan. What a powerful hour, incredibly powerful, something that we need to ponder for the days to come. Susan Rao, um, you, would you like to make some final comments and then any announcements, and then we'll close in prayer? Uh, yes, I. Uh, I've, my mind is and heart is like busting forth, but uh, I wanted to, please, if you have feel like you want to share what you just heard from the Lord, or if you had a vision, share it in the Global Watch community thread. Um, as Susan, I think this is all part of the corporate prophetic that God is birthing. And we need to understand this, that I think that some of the words that were released to us was waiting for this moment where the corporate expression could come forward. And I feel like there's a birthing even now of God's purposes and understanding of what that means. We've been hearing about a new move of the prophetic, but uh, um, I'm, I'm firmly believing it is a corporate prophetic. Um, and uh, where <clears throat> the words coming forth is going to come forth and people will have a platform for, for the release and for the affirmation and confirmations that need to come with it. And of course, always the backbone of God's word along with it. Yeah, Susan, how would you like to um, just announce again about the um, Heron Hood meeting? And oh, how yes, uh, the Heron Hood, if you can get registrations in by July 1st, that would be the, the most honoring thing we can do for our hosts in, um, <clears throat> in Heron Hood, uh, in, yeah just get them in sooner than later because uh we've we've got a plan there's a lot of things behind the scenes that we need to plan for and we need to know who's coming yeah and it's it's going to be the theme and the speakers is going to be on the persecuted church and um i, I think susan you're uh this is something that the lord is wanting us to how the lord is wanting us to prepare you know when the lord asked you are you willing to go into the camps with them and you said yes lord but only if you go with me None of us has the strength in our own in our own uh, being right. to endure the things that that God may be calling us to do. Uh, but we we need to learn how to we need to get prepared for whatever He is um, He's asking us to do. It's a very it's a very serious moment. It's not exactly a joyful thing uh, to uh, talk about going to um, Heronha to learn about that. But it is. For the joy that was set before him that Jesus yes. endured the cross. And so we we it's it's we can't get away from it in the words. So um anyways, thank you all. Um Shirley Momberg, if you're available, would you like to close us off in prayer? Sure, I can do that. Yeah. I have a scripture that has just been weighing on my heart. And um, it's from Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 2. Is it okay if I share that? Go ahead. Yeah. Listen to the Lord. The one who formed you says, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. 
when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burnt up. The flames will not consume you. And Father, we just thank you for this hour, Lord, this time, this prophetic hour, Lord God, where it's, it's as if people have been pulled up. It's as Susan Hagee stood there and, and just been lifting people up one at a time, one at a time. And even those who didn't speak, Lord, they were helped up too. It is a group lifting, stepping into the fullness of what it is, the preparation of the fullness of what it is that you have for us. Father, I thank you that all these words will not fall to the ground. Not one of them will fall to the ground. Father, I thank you for fruit. I thank you for fruit. And Father, the heart of each person that is so tender and is so yielded to you. Father, I thank you for an even deeper, deeper encounter with you, Lord. Just such a thirst and a hunger, Lord, for more of you. And we just bless Susan. We bless Karen. Fred and Sue and every single person on this line, Lord, we just bless them. In Jesus' name. Amen. All God's people said, amen. Everybody unmute yourselves, wave to each other. So I bless you. Amen. Bye. Blessing. Thank you so much. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you.